thank you for joining us for our first live webinar from California Desert Association of Realtors. We're hoping for a glitch-free presentation and we do apologize if we should run into any te technical difficulties. So we're going to start out this morning. I hope you're all plugged into the Flex MLS and you're looking at our home screen here. And first of all, what I want to do is set up our favorites. So we have a smooth, seamless workflow. I'm going to go into menu. And our quick search has a star, so that's good. That means it's on our favorites bar. I'm going to add my saved searches as a favorite, so I will click on the star. And when it's yellow, you can see up here that it is on the favorites bar. I'm also going to add my contact management, which is under contacts. So if I hover over here, here. and slide over and highlight the star. Now I have my favorites bar set up. So I have a seamless workflow. I can also arrange my favorites. I go into this reorder button over here on the right. Click here. And if I go on to these little lines, I can drag my favorites into the order I want. And I also can remove them from here. And I will save this. And now my favorites bar is set up for me to easily do the work I need to do. Okay, so today we are going to be going over search, view, and act. I'm going to begin with a quick search. So I'll click on quick search up here under my favorites bar. And I'm going to come down into this geocoded bar. It says MLS number, address, or map overlay. So since we deal with subdivisions a lot out here in the desert, I'm going to put in a subdivision. I'll just begin typing. I'm going to start with Palm Valley. And as you can see, we get a pop-up dialog box. Okay, so we're typing our subdivision into the geocoded bar. And over in this pop-up, you can see here it says MLS field street address, and then down below it says my map overlay subdivisions Palm Valley Country Club. So be sure you're selecting the correct thing over in this dialog box. So you can double click or you can click it and hit enter. And as you can see over on the left, Palm Valley Country Club has been added. And you can see it on the map. And one thing I'm going to do, which is a nice little trick is go over to the map side and I'm going to click on overlays and go down to subdivisions. And I'm going to select subdivisions. And now I'm going to minimize this a little bit. That's too much. So now I can see the name of subdivisions next to Palm Valley Country Club. So I have 
This is Palm Valley Country Club here. And I can see across the street from Palm Valley Country Club, I have Indian Ridge Country Club. So maybe I want to add the development across the street. So I'm going to add Indian Ridge. Click, hit enter, or double click. And then I also see that the Lakes Country Club is next to Indian Ridge. So I'm going to add the lakes. And then over here next to Palm Valley, I can see that I have Desert Falls. And I'll add and I'll Desert Falls. So as you can see, if you add the, if you open up the map overlays, this is a great way if you're not familiar with a neighborhood to know exactly the name of the country clubs to help you in your search. Now I'm going to go over to overlays and I will deselect subdivisions. Now over to the left, you can see we have four subdivisions and I have 127 results. So now I can add in more criteria specific to my buyer. What about Avondale? Avondale? Yeah, Avondale. I forgot that one. I'm in my head. So I'm going to go up to 450,000 and see what we have here. Okay, so I've got 62 results. That's not bad. I'm going to go ahead down to bedrooms. And I need a minimum of three bedrooms. So I'll enter three. Okay, I have got 19 listings now. So that's pretty good. I can go over to my list and view these listings and do what I need to do. Now I'm going to go ahead and go up to quick search again. And I'm going to do a little something for the agents over on our Palm Springs side because they deal with neighborhoods. So I go over to my overlays and I went in here and I selected neighborhoods. So if I have a particular client looking for a neighborhood in Palm Springs, I could look at the names of the neighborhoods in the Palm Springs area. So I can add those in here. In our section. Did you want the front door to be open? Do you have the heat on? I have. I don't have the heat on. I didn't turn it on. All right. I guess I never turned it off. I never turned it off. So I have Old Lost Pomace. I turned it off. And next to Old Lost Pomace, I have Vista Lost Pomace. So if you're on a PC, you need to hold Control. If you're on a Mac, you need to hold Command. You can't go on the MLS. To select additional That's properties. That's watching this. Or additional items. Anything over one, you need to hold Control down. So I'm going to select Vista Las Palmas too. And now I can see that I've added Old Las Palmas and Vista Las Palmas to my search. And I have 18 results. I'm going to go over to the overlays and I'm going to deselect neighborhoods. And I can zoom in. I'm going to go to our map view. And one of these properties is mismarked. As you can see right here, this says Thermal California. For some reason, it's showing up in Palm Springs. So if you see any listings you need to report as a violation, 
you can come over to these three dots that say more and you can click on report violation and it says when submitted this form will be forwarded to the MLS for correction and you can say you can type a little message this is in the Palm Springs area and then they will correct that I'm just going to hit cancel. I'm not going to send that right now. Okay, so I'm going to go back to edit search. So after you've viewed your results, if you want to edit your search, just go up here to where it says edit search. And that brings you back to your fields. And what I'm going to do is add closed and pendings to this search. So I hold down my control key and then I can select multiple items, closed and pending. And then when I select closed and pending, I have off market dates that I can input. So if I Click here, it goes from days to months to years, which I like. So I can just go to months and click maybe six months back for the pending. And for closed, let's say I wanna go, I'm gonna click here again to months. And let's say I wanna go three months back for closed properties. And now I've got three. And to deselect these statuses, I hold control once again, and I click. And those are now deselected. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to add additional fields into a search. I'm going to go back to my quick search. And I'm going to use another development. I'm going to put in Trilogy. And go over to our pop-up, go down to subdivisions and double click or click on this and hit enter. And now yeah. Trilogy is entered into our search and I have 43 results. I can see Trilogy as a map overlay. You can look on the map and see the outline of it. Check out the streets. Here's Avenue 60. There's Madison Street, Monroe Street. Okay. So to add additional fields, You can go down here and notice that you can put marketing remarks. So you can look for something within marketing remarks. Let's see when we type in furnished. Hit enter. Okay, so I have five listings in Trilogy that have furnished within the marketing remarks. And I think that is a popular place that agents would put something like furnished into the marketing remarks. Okay, I'm going to deselect that. And remove, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm going to remove the marketing remarks. I'm back to 43 results. And now this is the screen plus sign. This is where you add a field to your search. Anything within this list is part of the template. And we call this our search templates right up here we're searching in our residential search template and if we go to this drop down menu you can search in a residential lease template vacation rental residential income land commercial sale commercial lease a business opportunity so if you were searching for a business opportunity, you would go to this drop down, click on the business opportunity, 
template. And without narrowing any search criteria, I have 1946 business opportunities. Okay, let's go back to our residential. And I'm going back to our development. Okay, so down to our additional fields. A lot of people search for casitas out here, so I'm gonna type an additional field that says casita. And over here on the right in the add a field dialog box, you can see I have casita here and I'm going to click on casita. That adds it over to my search template and I'm gonna hold control and I'm gonna select attached and detached casita and notice there's a check mark next to casita which means it's included in my search now my results are 19. okay i'm going to add sometimes our discerning buyers want a house that only faces a certain direction like house faces north so let's type that in there house let me get rid of this stuff. House faces, and there we go. It pops up in your dialog box. And let's try house faces north. And we do have three results here. So that's exactly what our buyer is looking for. So we're going to go with these three results. And we're going to go into viewing our results now. So if you click on list, this is our normal view. These are the columns. This is our line view. If you click this little icon with the lines, you have a line view. I'm gonna make my screen a little smaller so we can see more things. Okay, we can see more columns now. So this is our line view. We have our normal view. Right here, we can click on the plus sign to increase our font. We can click on the minus sign to reduce our font. And we have under this sort drop down menu, we have many ways we can sort the properties um, price, highest to lowest, lowest to highest. You can sort by status, neighborhood, a city, days on the market, bedrooms. Okay, so that's how we sort. And you can also adjust the column width. So you can see these gray lines if you get this double arrow when you hover over the line. You can increase the column width, drag it out bigger. Okay, so I want you to pay attention to your columns. Um, it says in this view, we're in a residential view right now. And this has a star, that means it's the inherited system columns for viewing properties. And these are static, price status, MLS number, this will always be here. So we have a property type, which is residential. We have a subtype, it's single family. We see our listing agent, our area, what subdivision, City, square feet, beds, baths, a pool, the lot size, the year built, the days on the market, and whether it's land, lease or fee land. Okay, so these can be adjusted. If you don't want to, if you don't want to see the listing agent, or um, I don't know, we know this is a La Quinta search, so we could take this out and we could add our own things in there. So. 
If you click on view, it's going to take you to this window. And now we can go into fields. And over to the right, I'm going to enlarge this. OK. So on the right, we can see these are the columns that are in our view. So property type is residential. I know that it's residential, so I'm going to take that off. It's taken up space. I don't really need to see who the listing agent is while I'm viewing the properties for my own personal use. Um, I know it's Trilogy subdivision, but I would leave that on there just in case I had multiple subdivisions in my search. Um, I'm not really concerned with the year built on this search. And you can drag these into the order you like. So if I want to see the days on the market right away, I click on this, these little icons here and I can drag it up and put it at the top of my list. So I'm going to see right away when I view my properties that the days on the market, I'm going to get rid of, well, no, I'm going to leave subdivision. And I'm going to get rid of this property subtype. Okay, so we can add fields to our view also. So let's add, let's see if we want to know, we want to know if the pool is community or private right away when we're looking at our listings. So I type in pool and let's see what our options are. Here we go. Pool location. I'm going to click that and that adds it to our list. And I am going to drag this to the top of my list. So I have days on the market and right away I can see if my pool is community or if it's private. Now I can save this. And I need to go into the general tab and put my own name here. So I can put residential, I'm gonna name it residential pool. That way I know this is the view that I can select that's gonna show me the pool information. So I've named it, I click save. And now you can see my days on the market are here, my pool location is here. And I still have the original view here, which is residential. This is the default view right now. So when you're viewing properties, you can just go down to that drop down and you can select your residential pool and that way it gives you pool information. Okay. We're gonna go into our detail view. We're done with the list view. So within our detail view, any listing that we're clicking on right now, it's showing up in this report form. I'm gonna reduce my size. So when I click on a list, like a listing, it's showing up in this report. If I would like it, if I would like to view in a different report form, I can go under this report drop down menu and choose a different report form. So I can select any of these. And when I click, I'm viewing the properties in the report form of my choice. I can also view a property history here in the details. And let's go to our photo view. 
This is a great way to look at the photos of the properties. If you click on this little double arrow down here, you get a full screen. And you can just click the arrow, I'm just click on the little X up in the corner to get rid of it. And then we have our map view. If you click on map up here. So we're back to our map. When I click on a listing here on the left, it shows up as a star in, on the map. So this is great if you wanna see exactly where a listing is located. You can look at your satellite view if you want. Click on satellite right here and you can zoom in. And you can look at the listing in satellite view. And there it is. If I click here, it shows me the listing history. I'm going to go ahead and click on a property that isn't highlighted here and I'll show you what. Okay, so I'm going to click on this green icon, which means it's one of the active listings and I want you to watch the column on the left. So if you click one of the listings within the map view, it highlights it over here on your list. So if your buyer, say, wanted to be close to Avenue 60, this is great. You click on the house icon and you can select the listing easily. You don't have to go through all the details and everything like that. So if this is a great feature to select properties and to see the listing histories while you're searching for properties. Another good thing about this map view is if I select all of these properties, these are all the ones that met our buyer's criteria and let's say we emailed them to our buyer and now they want to go on a home tour. I can go over to, I'm going to enlarge this again. So over within our map view, there is a driving directions button. So you select your properties, click on selected. And then you can click on driving directions and you can get driving directions. And this will take you into view in Google Maps. Click here. And here's the three pop, sorry about that. Here's the three properties. We want to add the destination that we're going to be starting from. So let's say we're starting from the California Desert Association of Realtors. I'm going to put the address in. And there it is. I'm going to click on the address and it found the address. So now I want to take this little pin here and drag it up to the top of the list. And this is our starting point for our driving directions. And if you look over here to the right, you can see that it's 36 minutes. And it tells you how far you're going and here's the route. If I, I can also change the order of the properties. So I click on these little dots here and I can change the order and you'll see the map change. So you can arrange the properties in the order you like to get a driving directions that you like. And then we'll go down to details because it's all good, we like it. Click on print and you can print including the map or print text only. Or you can click on this little phone icon and it'll send the driving directions directly to your phone.
It'll text it to you, it'll email it to you. Okay, so we're done with the map view. I'm going to close this and I will close this window here. And now we're back into our search window. I'm going to show you how to do a radius search with an address. And that is done within our map window. So let's, I'm going to go to a clean slate here. Whenever you're in Flex MLS and you are sort of lost, just go and click on the Flex MLS logo and that'll take you right back to your agent dashboard. And I'm going to click on Quick Search. And we're starting fresh. Close that window. And this little push pin over here in the bottom right corner, click on that and put in your address. We're gonna type in our address, city, state, and zip code. And this is for a radius search. Okay, and then once you get your information in here, click on locate. And you can zoom in. The address I entered was 81136. So my pin is a little off and you can take your pin and you can drag it. Where is my address? Okay, here we go. So now you click on use this location. Here's the address and click on radius search. Now you can select the distance. I can put in 0.5. I can do half a mile radius. I can do one mile, two mile. I'm gonna do a two mile radius and I click on create radius. And I will X out of this dialog box. And there's my radius search. I have 81 properties surrounding the address that I inputted into the radius search. And I can now narrow down my search by entering sure. price. I have 17 listings now. And I can enter my bedrooms. And I have 11 listings and that's a pretty good search right there. Another way to search is using the quick launch bar up here. You can just, if you need to search for an address, you can just enter an address up here. And under listings. Here's the address I entered and I can open a new tab and view that listing. I can also use this quick launch bar to search for an MLS number. And there's the MLS number I entered and I will open that in a new tab. Okay, I'm going to go back to my search results from my radius search. I have 11 results here. And I just wanted to show you that you can work between tabs. 
So I have this radius search and I opened up my address search in a new tab and I opened up my MLS number search in a new tab. So you can toggle between tabs and work on different things. I could start another search. I could put in, let's use Avondale. And I can start a search for Avondale. And I can go back and forth between all these different things and work on different things at one time. Okay, so we've gone over the views. We have our list view. You can have your line, you can adjust the font size, you can sort it, you can customize your view. We went through our details. You can select any report that you want to view your listings in. We went over photos and the map view, how you can select a property within the map and it highlights it over here in the list. Uh, driving directions are over here in our map view. If you click on compare, you get comparison statistics. The comparison statistics you can select when you're printing reports. Search, search statistics, that's a mouthful. You can print right here from this screen. So you have search statistics here. Okay, so we have 11 results from our other search and now we're going to go and do our actions. So we can email. Our interactive version is, they can click on pictures, click on virtual tours. Our printer friendly version is more like a flyer. So interactive version is most popular. And here's our email body here. If you look over to the left in this section, you can see what you're emailing. So I'm emailing, I've selected 11 results and we have all results and current listing. So I'm good, I'm sending the selected results and I can enter a new contact here. So if I have a new contact, let's say I'm going to enter my new contact, uh, John Wayne, and then I can enter his email. And I save. So now I'm sending my selected results to John Wayne. I can send myself a copy. It's going through the Flex MLS system. That way I can look back at my sent messages and I can see the messages I've sent. Here's my subject. I'll put radius search. And you would put something more specific, like maybe your development or whatever you want to put to your contact. And then put a message in here for your email. And then you can email the listings to your contact. Now I'm going to go back into contact management up here on our favorites bar. And I'm going to show you that John Wayne was added to my contacts. And when I go into searches and subscriptions or activity, I can see what he's been doing as far as viewing listings and things like that if I sent him a subscription.
Okay, so I'm back to my search. This is another search. Uh, I've got eight results here and I'm going to save these. I'm going to save this search. This is Avondale Country Club, okay? So I'm going to save this search. And this is called Avondale. I'm saving the search as Avondale. It's a new search. And I'm going to link it to my existing contact, which was John. John Wayne. And there his name pops up, so I click on this blue bar. And that adds my contact to the saved search. And I will go ahead and save. So now the search has been saved to John Wayne, and I'm going to email the listings to him. I have eight results selected. I'm going to put the, the listings are going to John Wayne. It's sending me a copy. It's Avondale Country Club. I will fill in the body of my email and I will go ahead and email that. And now when I go into John Wayne under contact management and searches, I can see that my Avondale search is linked to John Wayne. And from here I can edit it, remove it, Okay. All right. Um, okay, so. Let's go back up to our Flex MLS logo. And we're going to go to saved searches. So now we just saved a search and we just saved Avondale. So if you go under saved searches, this is where you can find all your saved searches and you can manage your saved searches from within saved searches window. This is great because I'm sure after a while you get way too many saved searches in here. So if you click on these three little dots, they'd say more. You can delete saved searches. You can view the details. I'm gonna go into this one here. I'm going into this Palm Desert Country Club radio search and we're gonna view the details. And you can see when you created it. This is a great part right here. It's called the in the search results. So I can see I had nine total listings in that search. And it'll tell you how many new listings came on the market within the last 24 hours. Kind of like a hot sheet. So within the last 24 hours, within any of your searches, you can see what came on the market. Down here, I have eight new listings since February 19th. If I click here to view and reset, I'll view the listings that came on the market since February 19th, and then it'll reset to today's date. So the next time I go in there to view, it'll see, it'll show all the new listings since March 20th, 2020. You can also view the search parameters of your safe search. This is a radius active, residential. That was very specific search. Okay, and now I can also see if I have any subscriptions attached to my safe search. So if I click on subscriptions, I can see I do have a subscription that is attached to the search. And I can edit the subscription from within this 
little more icon here. So I can edit my subscription. Let's say my buyer doesn't want to get these listing updates every day anymore. So under this schedule, I have scheduled them to get their listing updates every day. So let's say they only want to get them because they kind of went cold. They only want to get them once a month. So I can, anyways, I can change my schedule within this subscription. I can also change the message that they get. Maybe I feel like I want to freshen up their um, message that they get with new listings and new listing updates. So that can all be done from within this window. And then you would save any changes. And so now we have just saved changes to a subscription and we're brought into our subscription window, which is great because you can check all the subscriptions you have for your clients. And you can freshen them up, you can delete them. So you can kind of manage your subscriptions and you can manage your saved searches. You can check your favorite searches. You can sort your saved searches. You can put them by name or by most recently viewed. And we also have our drafts here. So any search that you started and that you didn't save Maybe you got distracted or you got called away. You can always go back here and open up this search and keep editing your search or working with it. Another place you can find your draft searches is by clicking in the quick launch bar. So if I click here right next to this Flex MLS logo, just click in here one time and it's going to show you any saved searches or drafts that you were working on. So it'll show you the last searches that you were doing, whether they were saved or not. I don't have any right now, so nothing's showing. But if you just click in here, it'll show you your last searches. Let's see here. Here we go, here's our quick launch history. Here we go. So in this window that I was working in, I had done a lot of draft searches and here they are. So click in this quick launch bar and find your work that you hadn't saved. That's kind of a time saver. You go in there and then you click on edit search and you can continue working. I also wanted to go over um, a CMA and let's see. Okay, so we have 11 results and let's say we want to print those results. So we're going to go into our printing. Uh, we want to print all the results, so I'm going to click there. We can select public. If this is for our buyer, we'll select public. And then you can Look at the different reports. There's flyers down here. And you can preview them. Click preview button down here. That was the CDAR5 photo flyer. Here's another photo flyer preview. Here's a summary flyer. Let's look at this. This is nice. Um, if you have a lot of properties, you just get the summary. That's a summary flyer. Okay, so let's do the summary flyer. And you can also choose to print both the public and the private report at one time. Just select, select it right here. And that's gonna give you a public and a private report and click on print. And there you go. There's your public and your private report. 
And right here it says return to search results. Let's go back. And now I'm going to show you how to print a one line CMA. So I'm in this Avondale search. I'm going to go to my status, hold my control button, and I'm going to select closed. So now I have active and closed. And I need to select my off market dates. It's uh, set for 182 for some reason, or I'm going to go ahead and go back six months. I think that's standard. Four, oh, there we go, 21. Okay, that's good, that give me a nice CMA. So all I do is I have 21 results, which is great for me. I will go to CMA over here on the top right, this button. Click on CMA and then go to the one line CMA. And that's all that's the all Here we go. There we go. The internet is a little bogged down. And here we have our one line CMA. You can email it or print it. I'm going to go back to the XML button and take us to the home screen. The home screen, um, I don't know if you pay attention to it, but you've got all your messages from the California Desert Association of Realtors. So you can see what's going on and what's new. We also have links, important links here. And we're on the MLS dashboard. As you can see this blue button, that tells you what dashboard you're on. Uh, we have Flex MLS updates over here. If you want to see the newest features in Flex MLS, you'll get a jump on them before anybody else. Just click on these little links and you can learn all the new stuff in Flex MLS. So I'm going back to Quick Search. So we went over the email, how to save and save and link to a contact. We went to printing a report or a flyer, and we went to the one line CMA. I'm also going to show you one more thing before we close today's session. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to go. I have 21 results there. Let's go to a pretty picture here. That looks pretty good. Let's see. Yeah, well. Okay, so you can click on any listing and click on the share button and you can post it to Facebook or Twitter. This is very cool if you're into social media. You can post any listing. So here it is, um, it's on a Facebook feed. This is what it'll look like on Facebook and you can just say something about it. Go to this little drop down. You can share it on a friend's timeline. Here's the different options. So I just wanted to show you that before we wrap it up for today. So if you have any questions about what we went over today, um, just call the California Desert Association of Realtors. I hope you learned something today and we really appreciate that you called in or joined us, joined us on our first webinar. So everybody um, be safe and thank you for joining us.